Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back! Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Boost! Peekaboo. I see you because I'm YouTube famous now. Available in 2021. The album, Dad, AF, Rock on Gold Dust. Who? Woman! Boost! How are you guys doing today? Oh my God, so much to talk about. But before I do, I want to give a very special shout out to Skillshare for, yes, sponsoring another video over on my channel. You guys, I love Skillshare so much, okay? It is one of the coolest things I have ever seen in my life. So if you don't know what Skillshare is, if you haven't heard me talk about it in my videos before, Skillshare is an online learning community. They have all these classes that you can take. They're like really kind of like cool creative classes. Here, let me tell you the different areas they have. We have uh, classes in illustration, graphic design, photography, creative writing, animation, fine art, music, film and video, marketing, productivity, goes on and on and on. They have classes about plants, journaling, meditation, style, clothing, everything. They have all kinds of classes over there, okay? And the classes total about an hour. Each class is broken down into like seven or eight segments of like anywhere from like a minute to like five minutes. It's really, really cool. And they're taught by people that actually practice these things and kind of like come in to do this. So for example, the class that I took this last month, which my husband took and so he told me to take it, is called, here it is, uh, video for Instagram, tell an engaging story in less than a minute. If you all know, I'm trying to improve my Instagram stories. This was fantastic, you guys. And the instructor that taught it was really, really cool. It was kind of like fun watching the videos. She was aces. So anyway, the class is broken down into nine parts. An introduction, class project, finding inspiration, picking your theme, jump cuts, incorporating text, do a lot for a little, let's talk tech, and then the conclusion to the class. And most of the classes are like broken down that way. I have taken tons of the classes, you guys, and they're so fun. If you're like sitting around on a Saturday afternoon or, you know, a Tuesday evening or whatever, and you don't have anything else to do, and you're just like, you know what, like I actually want to do something kind of like productive and learn something, you know, that I can apply to my life, do it. Um, and when I started you know, asking my husband to do it too, at first he was kind of like, well, I don't know. I don't know anything about this. And then he did it and he really, really enjoyed them. Okay. So every person, like my best friend and everybody else that I have gotten to do the Skillshare thing, they love it. Right. So if you've been somebody out there that has been like, okay, I've been thinking about trying this. The first 1,000 people to hit the link below get a free uh, month trial. And there's so many classes. I mean, there's literally, you guys, thousands of classes. So you can go over there. You can try it out free for a month with my link below, and you will not be disappointed. So anyway, uh, go try that out. And I want to say a special thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. All right. Now let's get into today's drama video. Well, kind of drama. When your lips are dry as mine, then what? Sing it with me. Then it's Luna Beauty time. All right, so, hi. <laughs> if you're watching this, I'm currently in Las Vegas, Nevada. I know it doesn't look like I'm in Las Vegas, Nevada. I know it looks like I'm in my old chair, like uh, Roseanne's couch with the Afghan sitting in my living room, but no, I'm actually in Las Vegas, Nevada for my 10 year wedding anniversary, 13 years together with my husband. I cannot believe it, it seems crazy. I think back on that, you know, and what's so crazy about it is that I canceled two dates before I went on the third date with, I think it was the third date with my husband. I didn't wanna go. I wasn't wanting to be in a relationship. I was planning on moving to Denver, Colorado because one of my dear, dear friends lives out there and my mom's best friend lives uh, right outside of Denver. And so I wasn't like real excited about being in Indianapolis anymore. And I had asked my husband Alex out in April and he at the time said that he wasn't interested in dating or whatever and then hit me up later in August and was like, hey, are you gonna take me out on that date? Well, what he said to me was he was still interested in his ex. So in August, he hit me up and he was like, hey, are you gonna still take me out on that date? And I said, oh, are you over your, your ex? And so we planned this date and I didn't wanna go. And I called my friend after canceling it twice, and I said, I just don't want to go on this date. He goes, listen. He goes, worst case scenario, you go on it, you have a good meal, you make a new friend, okay? He goes, best case scenario, you get lucky. And I got real lucky. I got real lucky, look at me, 10 years, okay? 10 years together, 
and I feel honored to be, you know, my husband, if you do not look at your husband or your partner as being one of the most amazing people that has ever graced this earth, get you a new husband or wife, okay? I'm just telling you, you know? My husband walks across the bedroom and I'm just like, man, I'm so blessed to be with this person. And it has not been easy. And you know, and I've talked about in so many of my videos about we've been to marriage counseling. Hell, there was a time not so many years ago that I thought we were going to be filing for divorce, you know? And here it is today. What we're doing is trying to figure out the restaurant that we want to go to for our wedding anniversary to pick a new special place because we have so many special places. We love Las Vegas. We got married in Las Vegas at the Cosmopolitan. Um, one of our first trips was to Las Vegas the Thanksgiving after we started dating and we just love Las Vegas. So, this video is pre-filmed. So I don't know if I get asked like drama questions. They may be outdated by the time that this video airs because I'm going to be posting this on Sunday, which is the first day that we're going to be in Las Vegas. Okay, so that being said, I posted on Instagram that it was time again for another opinions video. What did you guys want my opinions on, all right? So I'm going to get into this and I am going to just, I haven't looked at them. Last time I typed them all out, so I was completely prepared. I didn't do it this time. In fact, I was just sitting here. I had put up the ring light. I put everything away. I was sitting here and I was like, I didn't film a drama video today. This is, uh, this is actually Wednesday. And I've been running errands all day. And I came home and I filmed a couple other videos. And there really wasn't a whole lot of drama going on that I wanted to. I mean, there was something I was going to talk about. But I was like, I'll just save it for tomorrow. And then I got over there and I was like, oh, I got to do that video for Sunday. Or I'm not going to have a video to post on Sunday when I'm flying out of here. So I sat down and I started looking at these questions. I got like four or five in. And I was like, oh, these are good questions these time, this time. So, I mean, there always are. But they're kind of different questions, some of them. So I'm real excited about it. All right. So let's get into this. The first question comes from uh, Tumalia. And they said, Sasha Velour most iconic drag artist. Okay, so my opinion on that is Sasha Velour, who was the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race, I don't know what season, love her, think she's fantastic. No, I do not believe that she is the most iconic drag queen that has ever existed. I don't know who I would say is the most iconic drag queen that has ever existed. Um, a little background info. I went to my first national drag pageant in 1993, and it was entertainer of, National Entertainer of the Year in Louisville, Kentucky, when Shayla Simpson won. I found out about three weeks ago that you could buy this, you could stream them to purchase them through this place called Click Click Expose. It's called something different now. But anyway, I have watched literally like six or eight drag national entertainer of the years in the last week i watched every episode of uh, rupaul's drag race that's ever come out in u.s one i've watched both uk i've watched canada i know uk just started again i think um and so i've got a couple other you know places oh, down under i watched um so i love everything to do with drag I, and you know what's interesting is i have never once been in drag not for to be funny not to dress up for halloween i've never been in drag um, but I would, but I kind of saved it because I thought it would be fun to save for a video if like some big drag queen I ever met wanted to put me up in drag, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon. So, um, I would love, to, like if I could pick who that would be, I would love to do a video. Um, who would I do, a, um, a, a video with? Oh, um. Oh, I don't know. So anyway, uh, I, I used to say Alyssa Edwards because, you know, I love her so much and I stole the boost um, from her. So I don't know who I would uh, do a video with um, a, as a drag queen. I'm not really sure who it would be. Let me think about this. Um, I'm looking at some of the other questions here. i got to give an answer in case somebody out there is watching, in case a famous drag queen. Eureka O'Hara. If I could do a video with Eureka O'Hara, I would, oh, I would faint a million faints. I haven't said that in a long time either. I love her so much. I love Eureka O'Hara and I love everything she stands for. Okay, um, let's get into another one. My battery died already. <laughs> so many of you asked me to have merch that says my battery died. Would you like me to come up with like coffee mugs and t-shirts and stuff that says my battery died on it? If you do, let me know, put it in the comment section below. But anyway, I now have a fully charged battery so I can answer these questions. All right, let's get back into these questions. Okay, I went way, way, way down. Let me get in here and refresh it again. Oh, there's a new one. Okay, so this is from Rachel. Rachel, I actually get asked this question quite a bit in Q&A. So Rachel asked, 
Did you get the vaccine? If so, which one? And yes, I am fully vaccinated and I got Pfizer. Okay, uh, Sadie asked, Cher or Madonna? Well, okay, so Cher, I love. I love her older music. Um, her song with Sunny, I've Got You Babe, um, is one of my favorite songs of life. I included it in my book, The Before Now and After Then by Peter Mont. Um, currently out of print. Because um, people always contact me and they're like, uh, do you know your book is for sale on Amazon for $900? I'm like, yes, I'm very proud of it, but it's not worth that, so don't buy it. <laughs> anyway, hopefully one of these days it'll be back in print with a new publisher. Uh, anyway, um, and I love Cher so much, but for me it will be, has been, and always will be Madonna. Um, Madonna was a huge part of my coming out. Her friendship with uh, Sandra Bernhardt, who is like probably one of my biggest idols of life. I have loved, I, I call her Sandra Bernhardt to my friends, but I know she goes by Sandra. But anyway, Sandra Bernhardt is to me just like she takes her all this rawness and vulnerability and turns it into humor and shares real parts of her life and i have always 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 loved sandra bernhardt so much and especially back in the day from 1987 and 1990 if she were standing in front of me, true story, what I would say to her is you saved this kid in high school. Cause I used to watch her interviews late at night on David Letterman. And I just knew like there is somebody out there, even though we're so completely different, you know, and it was like her Madonna and David Letterman dressed exactly the same. And I, and I thought, you know, like, I, I want to be that. I want to be that free. I want to be that uh, free to be myself, you know, free to be you and me like the song. And, um, you know, in my own fantasy world, I think in high school when I was so scared of everybody and I was so bullied that in my mind's eye, you know, like Madonna and Sandra Bernhardt and all the dancers around Madonna and the Blonde Ambition tour that she later did and all that kind of stuff, I think made me feel like there was a world out there that I belonged in. And, and, and Madonna's music gave that to me at that time, you know? So Madonna for me. Okay, will you go live someday? Said, hey, it's me. Yes, I will. I'm actually thinking about maybe going live while we're in Las Vegas. Um, I used to go live all the time, like literally like three times a week. And I don't know really how I got away from that. Um, but I'm thinking about going live, starting to go live again, like every other week. Here's my question for you. We keep the booktube live stream on you now because, and I know nobody uses you now anymore, but we can guest people that way really, really easily. I've actually thought about going live quite a bit and like doing it regularly. Would you like that to be on this channel or would you like me to start like a Twitch account and do it on Twitch? Cause those are one of my two options is what I'm thinking. So let me know in the comment section below. Okay, uh, let's see, okay, um, what do you, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna have to ask some these questions that I'm like, I, they're like so opposing views on it, and I know you guys are gonna be like, really, that's a question you don't wanna answer, but what do you, okay, this is from Gwen, and Gwen asked me, what do you think of Erica Jane, is she innocent, or was she involved, I think time will tell, um, you know, I'm so into the, the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills this season. My husband, got, you know, watches it. My best friend, Tanya, watches every housewife that there is out there, okay? Except for the Potom Potomac. And um, so she knows everything. She reads the articles. She reads the blog. She knows everything about these people. We got in this long conversation about it last night. Here's my thing. I just don't know how Erica Jane couldn't have known. You know what I mean? I just don't know how she couldn't have known something was up. You know what I mean? Unless really maybe what the truth is is that they lived their lives so separately that she really had no clue what was going on at all and i think a little bit of this of that is starting to come out in the in the if you're watching the show um so i don't know i think more will be revealed with that i think we're going to find out more uh claire bear said how are you so positive all the time it's infectious i'm not i'm not i work real hard at it you know um, I realize honestly that every day that I get up, like I get up a lot and, or I get up often and I'm just kind of like up on the, got up on the wrong side of the bed. I'm just kind of like negative and it's like, oh God, I got to run here. I got to run there and do all these errands and whatever. And then, you know, like I try to sit in gratitude. It's one of the reasons why I start my day every single day with prayer and meditation. And I, you know, I'm a highly spiritual person. You don't have to be. Um, I have a higher power that, you know, also because I'm a sober person. <laughs> 
Why am I stumbling over my words today? These are things I talk about all the time on my Peterisms channel. Go watch my Peterisms channel if you want to hear about all that. Um, but you know, like I wake up every single day and I, I with prayers and meditations and I do a gratitude list and I read meditation books and I sit there and I have water or a cup of coffee, you know. And I just try to align myself with the universe and kind of like realize that like there's a bigger picture and I'm just one part of it. And, you know, then I try to look at the fact through gratitude that I am so, the first two things that I am grateful for every single day is my life and my sobriety. Those are the first two things that I am grateful for because without those two, I mean, if, if I'm not alive, I'm not alive, right? And if I'm not sober, then I'm not going to have all the things that I have in my life. So those are the first two things. And, you know, in being grateful for your life every single day that you get it up like for me it makes me realize what a gift my life is and also what a gift sobriety is and uh you know my life could look very very different and it could and not just because of being sober you know i have a blessed life i have a life beyond my wildest dreams you know and um and, and I have to stay focused in that and realize, you know, today is a gift. And there's somebody out there today fighting for their lives, you know. And um, and I want to take today and just live it to the fullest. And that usually pushes me and propels me into positivity to realize, yep, here's another day that you were given. What are you going to do with it? You know, don't waste it. Don't waste it. Because we're all just here for, you know, a moment. We're all, it's fragile. Time is fragile, you know. And when you start losing a lot of people, you really realize that. Um, free Britney. I talked about that in my last one, but absolutely. I mean, just the whole thing breaks my heart. Um, okay, let's see. What's your favorite pageant system? Do you prefer to watch or judge? Oh, God. Well, they're so, they're two completely different experiences. Um, I've never judged a drag pageant. I would absolutely love to drag, to judge a drag pageant, especially a national drag pageant. I'd be like, I would seriously die. My favorite, um, my favorite, I'm just going to pick all, okay, of like uh, scholarship pageants, drag pageants, everything. My favorite pageant, which I've actually never been to, is Miss Continental in, um, in Chicago, Illinois, and it is Labor Day weekend. And I have literally watched every, um, <laughs> every Miss Continental uh, talent, every Miss Con I've watched all the tapes. I've watched the YouTube videos. I've watched the runways, how they started with the formers. I'm obsessed with all of them, okay? I love all of them. Sasha Colby's probably one of my favorites. Mimi Marks, Maya Douglas, who else? I mean, there's so many, right? Oh, well, um, Candace Kane, um, the Mocha Montrese. I mean, so many, right? And, um, I just, I, I love the whole, uh, the continental uh, pageantry system. If I if I were a female impersonator and I was going to pursue a pageant, it would be it would be continental. Like con continental to me, and I love Entertainer of the Year, but continental to me is the cream of the, cream de la creme or whatever creme de la creme or whatever you say. You know, it just truly is. Okay, um, did you go to your senior prom? If so, do you have a photo? That's so interesting. I, I don't think I've ever gotten that question before. No, I did not. I didn't go to any school dances. Uh, you're going to get me real emotional talking about this. Um, I didn't think they wanted me there, first of all. You know, I didn't feel like I fit in. Um, I actually, my senior year, I had a, a, two different girlfriends that asked me to go with them. And... Um, we ended up going out to dinner, a group of us, where a lot of our friends were going to dinner. It was this uh, place, it was this fondue place here in Indianapolis called Schaefer's. It doesn't exist anymore. You know, in, in retrospect, I was, the thing is, it wasn't just because I was gay and I was bullied. It was also because I was so like anti-establishment about everything, okay? I didn't, I mean, I was just so punk in high school. You know, I didn't go to school dances. I didn't go to any sporting events. I didn't participate in any clubs or any, I didn't do anything. I showed up. And barely did that, you know? And one of my... I, I am a person that has regrets in my life. I know people are always like, well, I have no regrets. Well, I do have some regrets in my life. And one of my regrets is that I wasn't more active in high school. And I, I don't know, like, I still don't think things would have been great for me. But I think that maybe I would have made some long-lasting friendships I, you know, didn't have. And I don't know what that experience would have been like. All I have is the one I have. But I will tell you the one that I had, you know, I feel very blessed that I had you know, four to six badass girlfriends that 
protected me at any expense and loved me unbelievably and um, have gone on to do amazing things and they are just really unique women that I feel like um, had they not been my friends I, I wouldn't be who I am today and um, we had a lot of fun <laughs> we had a lot of fun you know so I don't I don't regret the people that I hung out with but it's like if I could have two experiences you know, did you ever see the movie uh, Prince of Tides and it's at the end when he's going over the he's like for if every man there were two lives it's like that you know you kind of wonder what would that experience have been like you know um okay Okay, someone asked me, do you have any experience with grief? Talk about grief, please. I've talked about it at nauseam on my Peterisms channel and talking about the passing of my mom and my friends and um, aunts and uncles that I have. Um, okay, I've never shopped at Aldi. Somebody asked me, I'm not getting any YouTube questions. This is so funny. Will there be Halloween decor vids? Uh, definitely, absolutely, definitely. That's from Angelina. Will you do more cooking videos? Yes. Do you use blue or purple shampoo to keep your gray hair beautiful? Okay, this is so funny. I just, and this is from CK, I just got um, uh, the Orbe uh, Silverado shampoo and conditioner. Um, I had seen, do you guys know Chris Olson? He's a TikToker, and he and his boyfriend, Ian Paget. Alex and I love them. We sit and watch their TikToks and stuff. We think they're hilarious. And they're just really an endearing couple. And, um, and there was an age gap there, too, so they remind us a little bit. I mean... Ian's a lot younger than me as the older one, but they remind us of us a little bit. Anyway, um, uh, Chris was talking about, because he had dyed his hair uh, whitish blonde, and he was talking about uh, using that Orbe shampoo and conditioner. And I had wanted to try it because I knew Jaclyn Hill swears by it. It's expensive. And so finally, I just was like, screw it. I'm going to get it because nothing else that I buy works. So I haven't used it yet, though. But what do you think? Hello. Hi. Prune. <laughs> oh, and all the ladies, swoo! Doesn't take much. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Magic, witches, spirits, ghosts. Believe in all of them. All of them. There's not a whole lot in this world that I don't believe, okay? Santa Claus, Loch Ness, monster aliens. I don't know. You know what I mean? I, I believe all of it, okay? That's why I listen to that Coast to Coast AM. And I'm obsessed with it, too, my lord. Okay. Um, what kind of luggage do you use when you travel and what airline do you prefer? The airline just kind of depends. The luggage that I use, I, well, we used to just have these old suitcases from I don't even know when. Um, we're trying to kind of like up our luggage game a little bit. The last carry-on that we bought, I bought us like uh, matching Samsonite bags from Kohl's. They're pretty nice. They're like hard cases. I would actually like to have those away bags. Have you seen those? Or like those really nice upscale ones. But they're a little pricey for a carry-on. I'm like $2,000. Dior has them too. And I'm like, okay, nobody needs a carry-on Dior trunk. I mean, maybe Peter Mon does if they want to gift me one. But that's not going to happen. Um, so I did buy a Patagonia big uh, recycled material black. I saw somebody have it in the airport. And this guy, let me just tell you about it. Do you ever, does this has ever happened to you? Okay. So there's this guy and this uh, this man and this woman and their two kids. And the two kids, of course, like, you know, decked out. They're like four and three. And they got like, Bir the, the boy has like Birkenstocks on and like, you know, polo shirt and Patagonia shorts. And the little girl's got on some little cutesy flowery dress. with it. She's like three and she's got a pair of Golden Goose shoes on. And matching the mom. The mom's got on cute jeans and a cute blouse. She looks like an Instagram, you know, whatever. And the dad did too. And he had kind of like longer curly hair that he had going like back in like a trucker hat, you know, and he had the golden goose shoes on too. He was the reason why I had to get them at the beginning because they said sneakers on the back of them. I still do love my golden goose, so I got three pairs now and I, I wear them all the time. I love them. But anyway, he had this big Patagonia suitcase. Do you ever see this? Like people do this stuff to you? You talk about influencers. There's influencers out there in the real world that get me all the time. We were out there at the airport, see? And he had one of those big roller Patagonia bags. I've loved Patagonia ever since I was a kid. My dad we used to ski when I was a kid. My dad, we skied all over the place. My dad always has worn Patagonia stuff. And we used to go to this store in Chicago. It was like eight floors. And it was called like Maury Majors or something like that on the way home from Indian to Indianapolis. And we would stop in there. My dad would always let me get like a new coat. Then one, like my senior year, there was actually a Patagonia store that was right next to this restaurant in Chicago. We were there for a weekend, my dad and my stepmom and I. 
and I got this corduroy purple shirt. Y'all, I still have it upstairs 30 years later, and it still fits me, and I cannot tell you how many times I've worn this shirt, okay? It's probably 32 years now. So, I've always loved Patagonia stuff. Lata Patagonia don't love big people, okay? They just don't. It doesn't fit on me. It's like vintage cut. So, I got this suitcase that's like a roller a duffel bag. It is the worst suitcase I've ever had in my entire life, okay? Yes, you can get tons of stuff in there, but the thing is, is that when you're rolling it, it twists and turns. It's like, I can't remember what airport Alex and I were in. It might have been, it wasn't, I want to say Miami, but we were outside walking and we were like having to walk. And my husband walked so fast anyway, and I'm carrying this thing, and I'm like, babe, can you please slow down? Because this thing is like falling over. It just was a mess. So anyway, that's the kind of luggage that I have. My husband, he has had some old suitcase too, so... Um, okay, wait. But good question. Thoughts on the Ace family? I don't think about the Ace family. I, I, they are such a mess of trouble. I have no opinion about them. Uh, uh, okay. Um, let's see. I mean, you guys are asking me some deep questions. Adult children of alcoholics who also are addicts themselves. I mean, most. Not most, a lot. I mean, I, I just talked about this in a Peterisms video that I did. I am a big believer in the predisposition for addiction. You know, I believe that I was born an addict and an alcoholic. And when I started, you, when I picked up for the first time, it just set it in motion. I was like off to the races, you know. My dad, as a doctor, as a surgeon, he really believes in that. You know, my dad believes. I, I, I don't know. I have just been blessed to have one of the most amazing fathers in the entire world, you know. My dad said to me when I came out to him, he, he was like, I, Peter, like... Not basing it all on stereotypes, but some. He was like, I, this is something that I have prepared myself for. And I thought at three or four years old, you probably were going to be gay. And he goes, and I believe that you were born that way. I just believe it's genetic. You know, I think it's chromosomal, you know, chromosomal. I don't know, chromosomes. And he always has, you know. And he has embraced each of my boyfriends. And my dad and my stepmom just, like, adore my husband. And it's fantastic, you know. So I believe a lot in the genetics of that. So does it surprise me? that adult children of alcoholics are addicts and alcoholics themselves? No, it doesn't surprise me at all. That's not to say that you can't become an addict or an alcoholic in a learned way either. I do believe in that as well. Um, okay, next question. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Dating a normie when you're sober. Well, <laughs> I'm married to one. Um, so a normie is a person that is not an alcoholic or an addict in recovery. Um, that's what they call them. And every person that, well, since I've been sober, every person that I, I've never dated anybody in sobriety. I've wondered what, well, I mean, I've never dated somebody that was in sobriety as well. I've wondered what that would be like. I actually have quite a few friends of mine. I have, you know, couples that I know that are married and that met in sobriety. I have friends of mine that got sober together. I have friends of mine that have dated other people in sobriety. I've had situations where I've seen that it's worked. I've had situations where I've seen that it's been disastrous. I just think that you gotta <laughs> get in couples counseling and stay real close to your sponsor. That's probably what I would say about all that. I don't know. I don't know if you're gonna date somebody in sobriety. Um, dating a normie, I don't know, for me, like, I mean, there's a whole other level of uh, difficulties that comes with it. By the time that I met my husband, you know, like, I don't know that I could have dated somebody that, like, drank actively in my first couple years of sobriety. My first probably two years of sobriety. But, I mean, by the time that I got, you know, all of my friends that are sober today, their partners that they're married to or in relationships with drank, you know? So, like, it's not a big... I know people, like, are always, like, they're, like... Does it freak you out when Alex has a glass of wine? Okay, so like I'm 26 and a half years sober. If my husband having a glass of wine or having a drink or whatever, like having a couple of drinks, if that bothers me, then there's something going on with my own sobriety that I need to take a look at. Um, it's been a long time, you know. It's been a long time, been a long time going on. It's been a long time since I have felt a true craving inside, you know. Um, I just, I don't know, on some level... You know, do I think about the, the fact that, like, it would be nice to have, like, a beer on the beach or whatever? Yeah, I, but I play it through. And I'm like, but that doesn't ever work for you. You know, like, you're, it has always been for you. One is too many and a thousand is never enough, right? So, like, I don't, I don't get jealous or I don't, you know, I, I will say maybe back in the day I did. I don't get so, like, this is how it affected me when we first started dating. It didn't bother me that my husband drank. It bothered me that I wasn't able to kind of, uh, like, 
participate in that with him. That like he could go out and he could have a glass of wine with his girlfriend, right? But like I couldn't sit there on the back patio and have like a couple glasses of wine with my husband or have a couple, you know, beers or get drunk with my husband. I've never been drunk with my husband, you know? Like I think there's some of those things that to, to most normal people are kind of like rites of passages, you know, like, um, and that's just not our life. Our life is different than that, but we're very aware of that. And so I don't know, it works, it works, you know? The other thing is that Alex has really, really educated himself on recovery. I mean, he knows the literature. He knows my sponsor. He knows my friends. I mean, he's around it a lot, you know? So I think that's really, really important. If you're, if, if, first of all, if you're in a relationship and, and you get sober or they get sober and you're the other person or the other person's there that's not needing to get sober, get in a 12-step program like Al-Anon or Naranon, which are sister programs to uh, other 12-step programs. And they're for friends and family members of alcoholics and Addicts because it will really, really help you take care of yourself. It doesn't teach you how to control the alcoholic or addict. It teaches you how to work on yourself in, in relation to that person. So that's the other thing. Um, okay. <clears throat> Julie Murphy's new book, If a Shoe Fits, I've been dying to see if you read it. I already, I pre-ordered it actually. I think it came out last Tuesday and um, I have not read it yet. I'm finishing up a, a cozy mystery right now. Okay, uh, let's see. What is your next big goal, personal or professional or both? I, well, I'm really toying with the idea of writing a cozy mystery series. That's probably my best, uh, best next big thing. Okay, uh, have you ever had a PB and pickle sandwich? Uh, if not, try it. <laughs> Maybe not. Um, Jacqueline Hill's lack of ad displacement. Talked about that in my video yesterday. <laughs> she doesn't at all. Um, I don't even know what some of these things are that people are asking me. The new Teddy Fresh and Jerry Garcia of the Grateful Dead collection. I bought a sweatshirt and a t-shirt. I will tell you their stuff is expensive, but it is so cute. And I had just bought two t-shirts and a pair of shorts from Teddy Fresh. Their stuff is adorable. Uh, adorable. I think Teddy Fresh might be one of the cutest kind of streetwear brands out there. I love their stuff. And the, the Grateful Dead stuff, the Jerry Garcia stuff is unbelievable. It's really, really well done. So... It was expensive, but I was like, I'm getting a hoodie and a t-shirt because I'll tell you what, the last time, not the Care Bear stuff, I didn't want the Care Bear stuff, but the stuff before that, the Argyle and the Stripes and all that kind of stuff, people think I don't like Ethan Klein. I don't understand where this started from. Whenever I am critical in any kind of way towards any YouTuber, people, em and I know Ethan Klein is not Teddy Fresh. I know that's his wife, Ela. okay, but I'm just going to say this. Well, first of all, let me say the last time that the Teddy Fresh stuff came out, which was the Argyle and the Stripes and all that kind of stuff, it sold out like that and I didn't get any of it. And I love it. I love the Argyle sweaters. I love the t-shirts. I love the Argyle t-shirts and the Stripe t-shirts. And I did just buy two Stripe t-shirts, so I don't know when those are coming. I'm like, fingers crossed, maybe they'll come here at time for me before I go to Vegas. But anyway, um, as far as Ethan Klein, like, I really, really like Ethan Klein. Like, a lot, okay? Um, and since I, I started watching the Front of Me's podcast, I now watch the H3, H3 podcast as well. And I really like Ethan Klein. And I really like Ethan and his mom together. And I really like Ethan and Ela together. That doesn't mean that I'm not going to be critical of Ethan from time to time. I think, like, you guys got to remember, I'm a drama channel. You know, this is what I do is to sit down and give commentary on what I see, my opinion, you know? It's like, every time I'm like not hard enough on somebody, people are like, you're biased. If I'm too hard on somebody, I'm biased. If I just share my opinion, I'm biased. You know, it's like, maybe it's just my opinion, you know? And I, and I do think to some degree, we all have bias. I, I really truly do believe that, you know, we all do. But like, it's crazy to me. Like people are like, you hate Ethan Klein. You're, I'm like, I really like Ethan Klein. He's actually one of the only YouTubers I watch. You know, in all honesty, I don't watch a Trisha Paytas video unless Trisha Paytas has gotten themselves into some drama, you know? I, I don't watch Gabby Hanna videos unless they're these series. I don't watch Jeffree Star launch videos unless there's something I need to talk about in a video. I could care less. They're boring, okay? That's the truth. Jeffree Star's videos are boring. There was a time that they were interesting. There was. There was a time I really liked Jeffree Star's videos. That's why I didn't post videos anymore. They're boring. Ethan Klein, H3H3 H3 podcast, I enjoy. I do watch that. So it's always interesting to me when people say that. Um, uh, 
What foods would you eat if you had to eat meat? I don't know. I'm kind of at the point with being a vegetarian that almost like even thinking about some kind of meats like really kind of makes me sick to my stomach. Like I almost can't even think about it, you know? Um, do you think Gabby Hanna will actually ever leave the internet? Absolutely, 100% no. She's obsessed with it. Um, let's see. Okay, when will you have skate videos? I don't know. I haven't skated not once this whole summer. Um, how did you like your Vegas wedding? Any information would be appreciated. I'd 100% recommend a Vegas wedding, okay? One of the things is that the number is limited, so you can't bring tons of people, okay? We had we could only bring 30 people, which, you know, like a lot of friends were like, I don't know why I wasn't invited, and we're like, we could only invite 30 people, you know? And for me, it was like my aunt and my uncle were there, my cousin Caroline was there, you know, then like Alex's mom and brother were there, his other brother and sis sister-in-law, now sister-in-law, she wasn't then, were there and um alex's godmother was there you know i mean we had like my dad and my stepmom were there we had close friends and family that were or close friends so it was really hard to invite a lot of people but it was perfect it was 30 people the, there's so many different packages out there and um in las vegas we really lucked into a package we got married at the cosmopolitan right as we got married the fountains of the bellagio went up behind us it's kind of a joke in our family when we tell the story because if you look at the wedding pictures as they're announcing us and alex are kissing my cut my cousin caroline who was like my best person and alex's uh person was his best friend sarah um so anyway uh caroline she's not watching us kiss as they announce this as husband and husband she's looking out at the window at the pool <laughs> The fountain. Caroline! The fountain of the Bellagio. So anyway, um, and I will tell you that my dad, my dad spoke, Alex's mom spoke, my dad walked me down the aisle, Alex's mom walked him down the aisle, Alex's brother Fufu spoke that I did a video with previously. Um, you know, it just was a really personal, personal, intimate um, wedding. We had so many people that came up to us. We wrote our own vows, um, and so... Yeah, um, I should share sometime in here what I wrote, but, or what we wrote. And I won't share the exact vows, but we based them on some philosophies of things that we really believe about marriage. And then we had my dad and Alex's mom share, like, things that they believed about marriage. And one of the things that my dad shared was that people say that marriage is 50-50. And he said it's absolutely 100% incorrect. That marriage is 100% 100% and that all relationships are 100% 100% and that at any given time you have to be only in control and worried about your 100% because the other person at that day might be putting in 30 or 20 and if you have two people putting in 20% into a relationship you're not going to have a very good relationship so every day that you get up you've got to think about your 100% and how you're going to put your 100% into that relationship and he was absolutely right you know um, I also had one of my dear dear friends who has since passed and he was in his 80s when he passed away and he had been married for 50 some years and i asked him i said what give me a piece of advice on this was at our rehearsal dinner um which our rehearsal dinner was in the venetian so anyway it was this restaurant in the venetian or the plot so i can't remember but anyway it's a restaurant that's a lot like cheesecake factory that's where we got a big room in the back and it was real fun um it's like the something the vox hall or something like that anyway so uh, I asked my friend and I said, you know, you've been married for 50 some years. What's good advice about marriage? And he said, divorce is not an option. And I said, what? I said, yes, it is. And he goes, divorce is always an option, but you have to go in. Is there like something hanging off of me back here? Do you see this? What is going on? Have I not noticed that the whole time? Oh, it's a flower. <sighs> but he said, you have to go into your marriage thinking to yourself, divorce is not an option. Like it's just... It's not an option, you know? Like, whatever it is, we're going to work through and we're going to fight it through. And I think that really helped my mindset when we were really having problems, you know? Okay, let's see. Best Worst Cast Member on the Hills. I hate that show so much. My husband loves that show. Okay, first of all, Best uh, best Worst uh, Cast Member. Well, I didn't watch it back in the day. So, I mean, I watched bits and pieces of it, but I know who they are. Um... Jason still looks so good, doesn't he? I mean, he is hubba hubba. Uh, I have to tell you that I really like Spencer. I, I, I didn't like Spencer before, but I really, really like Spencer now. I mean, I think he's a total phony with all of these crystals and stuff like that, but I kind of like him. And then the one that I don't like is the long-haired guy that thinks he's a rock star. He's a hairstylist. Bobby something, is that his name? 
Who is he fooling? He thinks he's like a rock star from the 80s. Come on now. All right. Uh, have you read anything by Megan Miranda? I've read one book. It was highly recommended to me, and I did not love it. And it was something, the something girls, the missing girls. Oh, my God. So many questions about Erica Jane. Do you think Erica Jane knew about the situation with Tom? I just don't know how she didn't. It's like, oh, no, Tom didn't do this. Tom didn't cheat. Tom didn't this. Tom didn't that. And then all of a sudden, she's like, oh, Tom cheated. Yes, this. Yes, that. Well, what else did you know that you're not saying? But she can't say it on a reality show and implicate herself, you know? So we may never know until, you know, down uh, the lane. Um, uh... Okay, let's see. Why do you lump Tati in with Shane and Jeffrey? She owned her part, just wondering, love you. I adore Tati Westbrook, okay? I really, really like Tati Westbrook. And I think she has really shown growth since she has, who's calling me? Oh, it's my good Judy Tanya Jean. I think she has really shown growth since she has come back. I think she owned her part. I think if I were sitting across from Tati, what Tati would say to me is, there was a moment that I got, I, I lost, I lost my way. I, I got involved with these younger people that I thought were my friends and they were supportive of my business ventures. And I really had hope for all James Charles and all these people, you know, and then I had Jeffrey and Shane in my ear and I was caught up in all of that for a moment and I don't know why and I'm done. I'm done with it. I don't want anything to do with those people anymore. And they're toxic and they're negative. And, um, and yes, I think that Tati had a part in everything that happened. I don't lump her together with them in my head. I lump them together when I'm talking about them. More for the audience, because I know that when you talk about, like, Shane and Jeffrey, it's like, well, Tati was part of that, and Tati made the videos, and you talk about James Charles, that's why, right? I probably need to do a better job going forward on um, differentiating that. Now, I do know that there are a lot of people that are like, you know, why is Tati getting this pass and whatever? Tati came back, and I think she pretty, she addressed things pretty well in her video, and, and I love the fact that she's just kept it moving. She's very active on social media, Instagram and Twitter. She's posting regular videos and she's like, you know what? I, I learned my lesson and I'm leaving it back there and I'm going to move on. And um, yeah, I, and I hope she's happy. And I have to tell you one thing, you don't really know it until you're sitting on this side of the camera. And this is, a, this is something that really, um, it really earned a lot of respect. Like I, 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 I gained a lot of, how, how, I'm trying to say this right. I respect Tati a lot for this, okay? Because I think to hear it as an audience member is one thing. To hear it as somebody that has said it on camera, I don't know that you really realize how difficult it is to talk about. When Tati talked about marriage problems that she had had, like it really touched my heart. I don't think people really understand how difficult that is to talk about something so intimate on a, on a video where you don't know what people are going to say. You don't want people to think poorly about your partner. You know, you don't want people to think poorly about your husband or your wife or to wonder what occurred or what happened when it could be minimal or it could be huge and whatever. And for her to talk about that on that level, which is one of the reasons why I talk about it so openly, because I want people to know that this blissful marriage idea that you see on YouTube from these people is a crock of crap, okay? No marriage is perfect. Marriage is hard. Committed relationships are hard. Friendships are hard, you know? They take work. And many, many times they take counseling, long-term counseling, you know, and we have to destigmatize that and get people away from being embarrassed to talk about it and embarrassed to go to counseling and embarrassed to talk about this and fix those relationships, right? Like my friend said, divorce is not an option and work through it. And I'm really, really, really proud of Tati for talking about that. Because I don't know that what Tati realized, but when I heard her talk about that, it made me feel not so all alone that I had gone through something similar too. And I'm sure a lot of people out there felt the same way. So I hope the best for Tati. I really do. I hope the best for all of these people. I really do, you know? I hope the best for Shane Dawson and Rylan. I, I really, really do. I think, you know, I come on here and, I, I, and I'm a commentary channel and I love to gossip and I love to talk tea with people. You know, I do it with my best friend and, and I have fun with it, you know? And I've done it with other YouTubers when I talk to them on the phone and it's fun, you know? And I talk about what's going on and I give my opinion and... You know, sometimes I get kind of hardcore about stuff and sometimes I just laugh and, you know, and I flip a fan. But at the end of the day, who I am in my core, I want the best 
for all of these people. You couldn't ask me about one person on YouTube or who has ever been on YouTube, whether that's the Ace family or whether that's Trisha Paytas or whether that's Jeffree Star or Shane Dawson and Ryland or whether that's Tati Westbrook or James Charles or whether that's Nikita Dragon or Manny MUA or Laura Lee or Jacqueline Hill or anybody and ask me, what do you want for these people? What I want for these people is for them to have the best lives they possibly can. And what I have learned over time, okay, is that all the houses and the cars and the bags, and yes, all that stuff is wonderful, and I love some of it too, okay? I do, you know? I love to stay in a nice hotel room, and I'm excited about that, and I love having a nice dinner, and you know, and I love all of that, right? But at the end of the day, peace and serenity in your heart the working on being a better person on a daily basis, we're never gonna reach any kind of perfection. I'm not, I'm no example of a perfect human being, nowhere near. I make mistakes daily that I'm working on, right? But stepping into that and owning that and saying, hey, I just wanna be the best version of myself I can be. I wanna right the wrongs of my past and I want to go forward and do that. I think like, I want that for all of those people. And when you when you really witness that in people, you really truly see that change. There's there's been a few that I've really really witnessed that from, you know. Manny Manny MUA and Laura Lee, like I think they took significant looks at themselves. I really really believe that. And I think Tati is doing the same thing and really distancing herself from the drama and the toxicity. And I think there are other people out there that have done the same thing. And, and I want for them growth. I want all of us growth. I want for you out there too, you know? For all the people out there that, you know, like that live in hate and turmoil and toxicity and, and are always in the drama and whatever, you know, at any moment, you can turn it off. I love you guys, and I hope that you enjoyed this uh, video, and um, I will be posting videos from Las Vegas every single day, so go check them out, and yeah, I just, I want the best for all of us, you know? I want us to be happy, joyous, and free, and I, and I want everybody to be able to enjoy their lives fully, and, and nobody on this channel that I talk about, whether you believe it or not, Nobody that I talk about and cover in my commentary do I dislike or hate or have any negative ill will towards, you know? I have questions for some of them that I would ask them if they were sitting with me. Um, you know, there are some of them that I don't think of very highly because of based on their choices, but I want the best for all of them, all of them. Anyway, let me know what you think about all of that in the comment section below. I love you guys. My husband and I will be doing a very, very special um, anniversary video on um, our anniversary, which is Wednesday. So stay tuned and to my Instagram because we'll be announcing it over my Instagram. And I love you guys. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.